All right, you're very welcome along <laughs> to this week's session of, uh, I don't know what this is, uh, but it's the DadCast um, uh, psychology session, psychiatry session, parenting session, uh, I don't know, but all the dads are here uh, because they're all locked in their homes and they're available to us. Um, Dave McIntyre, how are you? Yeah, I'm grand, Jared. Thanks, William. How are you getting on? I'm grand. Adrian, how are you? Howdy. I'm excellent. And uh, Nathan, we, we figure that you, you I was just telling us there before we came in there that you might have to leave the broadcast for a moment to take a delivery of uh, 74 cases of wine. Um, <laughs> what, is it, what is it they call PPE? It's this important stuff that I need to survive during this pandemic. Yeah, last, uh, last Friday night, as, um, as news came through that we were going on total lockdown, I was obviously thinking of, well, what are the things I'm definitely going to need over the next little while? And, like one of the only reasons for making trips to the shop was to, you know, pick up a couple of bottles of wine every few days, just to, you know, keep myself ticking over. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go big. I'm going to go all in, get a big order, and I won't need to do that for hopefully several weeks. So I, uh, I got the O'Brien's order in, and then the email comes in to go, we're so busy, it's going to be a week before we get it to you. But I got an e which was actually great because it's kept me off the drink all week. I was like, I'm not going to the shop to buy any wine until this lands. And then I got a text an hour ago to say, your delivery will land at 11.45. And we're now at 11.18. It's very, it, yeah. in fact, it was, it was, it was 11.44, it said. So I, I'm gonna, I'll do a live unveiling of the, the most joyful thing that's going to happen to me all week. Well, I was going to ask, how much wine did you actually order? I think I ordered... 15 bottles of wine and two bottles of gin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> did you go for um did you go for a bit of a mix and match or do you have your favorites you like to get 15 bottles? No, of I went for a bit I went for a bit of a, a bit of a mix and match. Well, you see at the weekend when you end up on Zoom to very various people, I've been watching people sitting there and they're all having lovely gin and tonics and I'm like, oh, I've no, I haven't had any gin in since this started, I'd love a bloody gin and tonic when I'm sitting. They look just so, when somebody else has them, they're the most refreshing mm. thing in the world. So then I'm like, well, there's no point order one bottle because then that'll be gone, then I'll be wanting another one. So listen, it's, it's fine. It's all in moderation. Like, I'm sure there'll still be bottles left in a month's time. Yes, it's all do? in moderation. What are you going to yeah, it's 17 bottles of drink. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. bottle. what are you going to do with the bottles? The bottle bag. <laughs> I was down at the bottle no, bag no, yesterday. No, 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 to protect yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm currently trying to figure out, like, how much protection do I need? Just don't do for another three days. Yeah, need no. Three days. Can I put them in the washing machine? I'm oh, sorry, the dishwasher. Can I put them in the dishwasher? Can I put them in the dishwasher? <laughs> no, because the dishwasher gets to a high that's temperature. Oh, all the alcohol will come off. Oh, hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Which would be an absolute waste of time. Yeah, okay, I Robert know, loves... I Disinfect the bottles as, they, as you open them. Yeah, it's, um, it's a weird thing that the uh, postman coming uh, provokes such fear. And I, I, then I keep getting these letters on, like these pointless like, letters from the banks. I'm like, stop sending letters. Mm. I don't want to open this thing unless it's of some sort of value to me. Like, I mean, with, you've uh, all right. It, it, you know, the chances of you catching it off the letters is really infinitesimally small. Like it's, it's the same chance as... as I don't know. Some I'm trying to think of some sports event that like it's the same chance of me winning the Tour de France essentially. Like that's how unlikely it is that you're going to catch off the. It's lower the risk letter is what you're coming through your door. <laughs> <laughs> it's what? Lower risk is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. I still I disinfected yesterday's post. I it was um, a package. It was a box that was left on the port on the just outside the door by the postman. I opened the door, kicked it into the hallway. And then a uh, dead old bottle of disinfectant spray soaked the packaging. While Jesus I, Christ. I left it there for another two hours. That was the only way I was perfectly happy that I was going to make sure there was absolutely 100% protection. I brought in the bins this morning and inadvertently, as I all have been doing for years, also brought in the neighbor's bin and then realized oh. I really shouldn't be handling the neighbor's bin. So made sure that hand stayed in my pocket, and as soon as I got into the house, disinfected that hand. When are these? <laughs> and what about the what about the hand? Your hand? 
What about your hand on the neighbor's bin, though? You might have infected them. Oh, yeah. They'll have to wipe they, it. They, yeah. they need to be washing their hands with regularity I hope you, to make I hope you've texted. I, told them that. I should have put a note in the door saying, I handled your bin this morning. Yeah. Like they'll know. They won't think the bin fairies brought it in, so they'll have a fair idea. <laughs> by, um, by the time they've spread dead all, all over the note and <laughs> got around your... Like that... <laughs> <laughs> like that, that in in, the, in this day and age, bringing in your neighbor's bin is the equivalent of pissing on their doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> like you it see? Is, it's, it's up there with the worst things you could ever possibly do. Did you see Chris O'Dowd Street during the week about uh, watching a TV show where two lads had uh, a handshake and he was like, this was so risque, it was almost as if they'd slapped dicks. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the bin at the bike yesterday. How much of an indicator towards your descent into alcoholism is the frequency with which you visit the bottle bank? <laughs> I don't think we should talk about this, Dave. I really don't. <laughs> I mean, I will say that the bottle bank was completely empty yesterday for the first time in recorded history. The uh, do the one on um, Cyclone Tarf Road, Dar Station, and frequently there are bottles left below us. And actually, that wasn't the case this time. So you could get in put your uh, bottles in completely empty and uh, there are a good 20 minutes putting bottles in. <laughs> I have two full um, beer case boxes of bottles in my car right now, ready to go. And I would say that is at least my fourth visit in the last three weeks. Well, off you go. It's fine. I think it's, it's definitely an, a, um, an essential service, your, uh, your willingness and ability <laughs> to drink through this. I'm not, um, I, I don't blame anybody for uh, slowly d deteriorating um, but actually, it, it, there is a knock-on impact. You don't sleep as well, and you don't get up feeling as fresh. And like, definitely, there's, there's a point coming where I'm going to go, okay, right, I'm going back to my early part of the year where I was exercising way more than I am at the moment, and I wasn't eating the absolute amount of crap that I've been eating for the last uh, two weeks. So at some point, there's a tipping point where you go, this is diminishing returns. This bar of chocolate is actually damaging my mental health. Despite... Uh... Sorry, sorry, I was going to say, despite my um, order that's about to arrive, I have managed, I think, to somewhat get it under control because the first week was, the first week was right off. You it's haven't made it. Pandemic. 17 bottles right at your door in 20 I've managed, I've, managed to, I've managed the last couple of weekends to restrict myself to basically Friday, Friday night and Saturday night, and then what's left over from Saturday night on a Sunday. But aside from that, I'm doing okay. Now that may change. <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> There's going to be a crate left over. <laughs> when this arrives in, the temptation must be just too much. I got to be honest. I'm not. E I'm eating very little chocolate because, again, how do you open the bar of chocolate without disinfecting it? Ah, come um, on. Hello. Well, but you're, that's only if you're opening it the second you bring it home. Oh, so if you're saying if I give it eight hours, maybe at a high yeah. temperature, it'll be fine. <laughs> in the dishwasher. That's fair enough. I, I did have a, a, a query, but I mean, obviously, anybody who listens to the first episode of this will know that uh, one of the running themes of this whole thing has been um, Dave's journey towards getting the snip. And it did strike me that, like, we haven't had that conversation in quite a long period of time. And is this having an impact now? Are you like, actually, you know, what we really need now is another baby to, you know, to, to come out of this the other side with something to look forward to or a reason to invest in our future? Or is it the complete opposite? And are you actually... Are you self uh, snipping at home at the moment? <laughs> right now, under no circumstances. <laughs> snipping. <laughs> is that what he's calling it now? Whatever the equivalent of a back street abortion is. <laughs> Neither. Neither of those things are happening. Um, wow. Um, there, there is definitely something else, another question that you're trying to ask there, um, which I'm not going to answer. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what was the question? I mean, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. <laughs> Is it about the self-snipping? He's asking me, am I attempting to self-snip at home or am I looking forward to having another baby once this lockdown is over? There is, you know, an alternative to that. But uh, <laughs> the same alternative that has been utilised for many, many, many months and years now. But, uh, and that is celibacy. <laughs> 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 There's more than one alternative. <laughs> yes, there are, there are alternatives. But it, it has been in the house with the two lads. And as I've said on <laughs> the last week, <laughs> oh, like, what more form of contraception would you want? 
The two of them are wow. amazing. And it, even there was uh, last night now, and I said this to some mates on WhatsApp, it was about five o'clock in the evening. The sun was out. The two lads were in the back garden and they were playing with the neighbor's kid over the fence and maintaining their two meter rate of distance, obviously. Only one guy's allowed on the fence. If the neighbor's kid is on the fence, they're not allowed within two meters of the fence, et cetera, et cetera. And they're having a great time. And I was sitting at the kitchen table and I had John Mayer playing on the uh, on Alexa and I was building Lego. And it was the most therapeutic, serene and peaceful hour I've had in the last two, three weeks, I would say. It was just phenomenal. And I was looking out at the two of them and going, they're just so amazing. It's just incredible that I can look out at them and I, I know they're safe and all of that. But there have been many, many moments over the last three weeks where I've wondered what it would be like if there was a third in there or a fourth as some families or a fifth as some families may have. And I just can't imagine the carnage that would be involved. It'd be grand oh, well, I, in circumstances where you could just farm them out, Dave. But at the minute, yeah. looking all four on your own. Oof. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. You had asked the question if um, this has been good or bad for your relationship with your kids. Um, you're kind of obviously, you're the kid sitting on the fence at the moment, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I probably, I, I probably would be sitting on the fence when it comes to offering a definitive answer to that question. Is, are the current circumstances enhancing or damaging my relationship with my boys? Uh, overall, I would say it is enhancing it because, you know, you can never spend too much time with your children. I think, I think that's the case. <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> Never before has, they, has that question been put to the test as, as it is at the moment. Look, of the four of us, I probably spend more time with my kids than any of us because I, during the week I'm at home far more because most of my work is at weekends and I don't tend to be working during the week. And if I am, it's at night. So I do spend a lot of time with them anyway, but there are childcare facilities in place. And every day I do get at least three to four hours to myself. So there's always that time for me. Whereas now there's absolutely none of that. And four out of the five weekdays, it's just me from 8.30 to 6 p.m. Bar when my wife pops down for a cup of coffee or a little break from work or to get her lunch or something. And yeah, there have been a couple of meltdowns. There have been a couple of moments where, you know, I have yesterday, for example, I will, I'm trying to teach my five-year-old how to tell the time. And it's a little goal of mine that by the time he goes back to school, possibly in September, he will be able to tell the time and I'll have a watch bought for him. And so every day we're doing tiny little bits of the clock face and I'm taking the big clock off the wall and, you know, manipulating the hands on the clock myself. Only yesterday I didn't replace it on the wall well enough. And as I pushed the dishwasher close at my foot, the clock came down and basically the glass face smashed into a million pieces. And this was in the midst of the younger guy throwing an all time meltdown because he couldn't find the piece of Lego he'd had two minutes ago. Fair enough. And I, I used every swear word under the sun, apart from the see you next Tuesday swear word. <laughs> it was like time stood still. The look of absolute horror on their faces as the red mist descended and I let every, let it all out. I let the last three weeks out. There you and go. And then what happened? Well, I cried at the corner. Then they brought it to my attention how often I had used the F word. <laughs> <laughs> I counted seven. There was 12. <laughs> but the other, the other thing that I've noticed in the last week, and I want to put this out to you and to our Dadcast listeners, do your children pick up on those moments where you outwardly express your disappointment in them? And for me, that is a long, deep sigh. So you've just you've just had dinner and one of them knocks the plate onto the floor. Oh. And you don't give out, but it's just that. <sighs> and the response to that for my five-year-old now is, Are you why are you always so tired, Daddy? <laughs> are we <laughs> Fair enough. Is that is does that happen to you guys where you know those moments where you're you're quite obviously disappointed in what they've just done, they are now picking up on that. 
yes. I, 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 yeah, it's like it's harder to hide it because there's nowhere to hide in your house anymore, really. Uh, because you have to face them all day, every day. I, I found it probably better than I had expected. <laughs> I thought I'd be losing the rag a lot more than I actually am. Like when I do, it's totally over the top. I think for the first time ever, I told my eight-year-old to shut up the other day. I know, hmm? yeah. That's, I know, I've done the same. You need, That's the outcome. We need, we need to be using our rag in incremental amounts with more regularity. Because otherwise, as you say, it's all pent up and then one small incident occurs and the, the lid blows off. Well, well this, was, this was at about 8 o'clock in the evening, just before they were going to bed, having had a full day of, oh, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do my schoolwork. Oh, I don't want to go out no. and do a bit of exercise. Oh, I don't want to play football. Oh, I don't want to read the book now. Like, you just showed up complaining. <laughs> and the second I said it, I'm I've like, had, I've had five bottles of wine last night, and the last thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. is you giving me gin. <laughs> See, I haven't had any bottle of wine because of the long delays in the courier firm getting us to my house. All right. <laughs> Still no sign of it. What time are we at? Eleven more minutes. <laughs> And it's not traffic, so there's no reason it can be delayed. Adrian, is this lockdown enhancing or damaging your relationship with your children? Um, I can say definitively with the younger one, definitely enhancing, because she's just over one. She hasn't a clue what's going on other than, Jesus, mom and dad are around all the time. This is unbelievable. And, like, actually, I'd nearly say she's come on a little bit even in the last few months. They develop at that age, obviously, anyway, regardless of whether we're around or not pretty rapidly, but yeah, just in terms of her like crack levels and general development, little bits of words starting to materialize. Uh, so for her, 100%, definitely the best thing. For him, I, I suppose what I would say is, I don't think we're doing him any harm. <laughs> I think that, <laughs> I think that, um, I think the one, the one thing that, like outside, yeah, outside of like, outside of the obvious stuff like, trying to go to Montessori, mixing with his mates, like play, he goes to football every Saturday. Like generally, I'd say he's like going to end up like about a stone heavier. He's already barely a stone to begin with uh, after all this. So there's all that sort of mental and physical interaction that he would have been getting outside of the home that he's not getting. So I'd say that's damaging for sure. Uh, but in terms of what's going on here, um, there are aspects of it that I, Jesus, I have to say, I really enjoy. Like there are, moments now in the week where I might be out like our gardens I think I might have mentioned it before are an absolute state gardens they're like two little sort of grass patches um are an absolute state and we've been out um getting stuck into that and the both of them have been out sort of rolling around the muck and getting stuck in in a way that like I never would have before I would have been like there's not just no time in the week to be getting involved in this level of messiness because I'll have to clean you up afterwards and there'll be all that sort of stuff going on whereas now I'm like oh if I bring them up in the muck for half an hour and they get covered in shit then I have to bring them in and clean them up for another half hour, and that's an hour gone. Off today, so let's 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 get stuck into that. Um, but I don't think outside of the stuff that we can't control, which is any access to another three-year-old for him to bounce off or um, like very much activity. I think I, they're not good. They'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's positive. I know we don't like to be uh, uh, about things, but uh, that's my view. What about I you, think Jeff? that it's, a, it's um, a completely evolving situation, right? There are times when everything is going great and the interaction between the three of them is really good and they're helping each other and they're being nice to each other. And then there are times when there is slamming of doors and punching and uh, nipping and like, you know, generally the type of torture that you would inflict on if you didn't have any morality in your life or any repercussions the type of stuff that you would do to your most pronounced enemy you know it's holding their face down in the muck and going, what are you dying so um i said that that has kind of that's been when i would have lost the rag the most is like i can't believe you're so violent towards your little brother your big sister your little your whatever whoever it was because they're all capable of it um but then there's other times when the, they're working together on the Lego challenge when they're playing games and all three of them are collectively doing stuff and that the amount of time that they're spending together doing that is getting longer and longer so um yeah that's been that's been great like that has genuinely been great and uh, there's a few bits like it, so 
there was um, there's been times definitely when what is happening is impinging quite significantly. Like they've all said at various stages, I hate coronavirus, I hate coronavirus, I hate coronavirus. Um, our youngest, who's four, has been up a good bit in the middle of the night looking for stuff, and um, and there was definitely a lot. There was a few nights where there were lots and lots and lots of questions about how did this happen, where did it come from, why did it happen, and um, so last night we've been talking about our summer holiday that we obviously talked about on the uh, dadcast uh we've been talking about that for a long time because we booked it in november and the whole point was that like you book it early you get to talk about it for a long period of time and so last night the news broke that we probably aren't going on holidays and uh that was fairly devastating because it was like something to look forward to in the future and certainly our eight-year-old understands all this stuff she, she knows exactly what she's missing out on um so that has that has definitely been the type of thing that um, has been difficult to deal with. I would say, I don't, I mean, I, I would say certainly there's been a bit of a change. My outlook in the last week certainly felt more positive about stuff. It was a Tuesday I woke up and there was loads of news stories happening. And I was like, okay, we can, there's stuff for us here to talk about, think about that isn't just death toll and um, number of tests and absence of reagent. It was like, there is, an, there is, there is a future. It's coming. It might be far away, uh, but actually, there will be a future where we all go out into the world again and do some variation of what we used to do. Might not be exactly the same, but so um, I don't know. My, my my mental approach to this has definitely got a little bit better in the last week. One of our tweeters was in contact. One of our audience was in contact with us on the old Twitter machine there, and was sort of quasi answering that question, Dave. If I can find it here in front of me. Um, yeah, Paul McDonald had said, we sent out last night a bit of a tweet to say we were coming on, and Paul McDonald, how are you getting on, Paul? Uh, said that it's enhancing certain ways, like definitely more open to trying crazy stuff like kids yoga, uh, turns on the trampoline, etc. Just stuff that in normal times I thought was, I was too busy for. However, I'm using fucking shite a lot more with them. So, <laughs> swings and roundabouts. Um, which I think is like, there is, there is that thing, isn't there, of... Um, I hope that never, whatever sort of new normality we get to beyond this, um, I hope we don't lose that stuff like that. Like we, uh, I think I mentioned we're bringing, bringing the young fella to football every Saturday morning. Like I've started to do that here now. So on a Saturday morning, I get him to put his football gear on. We go out the back, I'll set up a course. It's not particularly complex. It's easy to do when you have um, like one or two kids or whatever. Like that's lovely. I hope that there's stuff like that, that we can actually, that there is some positive legacy of this that, we re-engage with each other, uh, our families, whatever else, in a deeper way, I suppose, than probably what we've been doing up to this point. Like that's definitely going to be one of the more interesting parts of what is next, as to how people work, like the ability to work from home. Like, does our entire focus on what's important change after this? Like, you definitely hope so, and there's definitely uh, an appreciation of being around the kids, and I think it'll be probably easier to be. And you have more of an appreciation for the hours you do get with your children when this all mm -hmm. finishes because we'll be so used to being with each other. And yeah, like kids yoga, there's definitely been some kids yoga. That Joe Wicks, that lad needs to be taken down a peg or two. My knees are in bits every time I try and do that. And also, it's way too advanced for children. It is way too it's advanced. Not. Yeah, the, the attention span isn't there for them at all. It's grown no. ups, really. Yeah, absolutely. If, if he ever, and maybe he's not going to get a million viewers live every morning and make a, well, he's giving a lost charity, so there is, there is that. It's a good thing, but yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, geez, a, a, million, a million viewers every morning, he's giving all the money to charity. Where did this guy go wrong with his... <laughs> 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 this guy, this guy. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah, we've, uh, put, we've had, and probably because similar age group for children, we've had an awful lot of the same conversations you've had. Uh, <laughs> so two nights ago, my eight-year-old, Jer, uh, woke up and about half nine, I mean, Jim Reeves not even asleep at half nine, bald and crying, and had a nightmare. And I said, oh, I was bald. He's like, oh, I was, I was in a prison. I was, I was in a prison, I couldn't get out. So I'm like, oh, he's obviously thinking that his house is now a prison. I'm like, well, look, we're going to get out. Like, this isn't going to last forever. You know, you'll be able to go see all your friends soon. And this big long, and then he's like, yeah, maybe I just shouldn't be building a prison on Minecraft. <laughs> god damn it god damn it but yeah. uh we we also need to have we were just talking about last night our holiday definitely isn't going to go ahead uh, and apologies to all the people i recommended to go to that hotel in spain which are, are not going to be giving you a refund uh, don't blame me don't blame me but as far as from what are i can tell not? the hotel is somehow still open they're obviously trying to pull a fast one uh, right so 
it doesn't look like a refund uh, is is coming. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we haven't we haven't campsites. Yeah, we haven't we haven't told them just yet. So I think they'll be they still keep talking about it. Do you think so? There's going to be widespread devastation. And last night uh, while I was working on my wife was telling me that the middle lad uh, had a complete meltdown and. I just want to go back to school. I just want to see my friends. Why can't I do this? Uh, like his, to say his face, like his teacher sends him a video message every morning and his face just lights up every time he sees her. And the odd little Zoom thing, even though they can't communicate, he's just absolutely buzzing uh, for the afternoon if he sees his friends at all. So I don't know, there's definitely a bit of concern. Does, like, does, do they get used to the new normal or does that get progressively worse? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it gets progressively worse. But I think um, the not communicating thing, like there's obviously verbal and nonverbal communication. So if they're just sitting in the room with the Zoom on, like that's not the worst thing, you know? Like even if it's just, because one of ours I had a call for about an hour and a half and there wasn't very much chatting going on, but they were just hanging out. And it was like, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. And it, there was certainly an uptick in, um, in their morale in the immediate aftermath of that. So like I'd say we probably all need to do a bit of experimenting. <clears throat> on the, on the um, nightmares, um, I've had two pretty horrific nightmares um, and the first one was uh, one of the kids was knocked down and um, the first two had crossed the road and uh, the other child uh, had run after them and had been flattened by a car and as I got to them I woke up and so I didn't actually get to see what was awaiting for me but I was like so panicked uh, it was like a Tuesday morning um, and it was about an hour before I would normally get up. And it took all my willpower not to go into the bedroom and see if she was still there and see if everything was all right. And I was not right for, I would say, good. So this is last week and I'm only really able to talk about it now. But I was completely shook for, I'd say, a good two days. But then the worst part of it was we had a conversation the following evening at dinner and she told me she'd had a nightmare. And I was like, oh, I had a nightmare too. It's, it's going to happen a fair bit at this stage. And she was like, oh, what was your nightmare? <laughs> and I was like, so I just had to make up some bullshit. I, I can't even remember what I made up, but I just talked and talked and talked for about five minutes. It wasn't because I couldn't obviously say, you know, that would have been uh, too freaky. But, but um, like, that was, I, and I, apparently loads of people are having bad nightmares. So, um, yeah, why did I, you I, why did you need willpower not to go in and check if she was okay? Why didn't you just go in for yourself and just check she was okay? Because it was it would have been I think it might have made it worse. Because I I I don't know. It's a good question, Dave. It felt like well I I would have been worried of waking her up, right? Like essentially, because mm -hmm. if you go in, <laughs> I would have had to check she was breathing. You know, like like. <laughs> old school kind of your first baby's home from hospital yeah. holding the mirror up is that baby alive is that so i would have had to and then i would not been able to just hug her <laughs> i just i just would have not been able to not grab her and hug her and hold her and wake her up and tell her i loved her like because it was so fucking real and it was so grim um but this you and, talked about uh, on the dadcast this is this is a pre covid 19 uh, event isn't it you've often talked about the, the terrible visions you have of tragedy. And yes, yes, but there, I'm awake. I'm awake when they happen. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> I, Jared, yes, can, I, can I ask you, are you two, your, any of your kids share a room? Yeah. So are, are, all of them are two? Uh, so we've uh, we've uh, bunk beds and uh, a box room and uh, the girls are in the bunk beds and okay. the boys in the box so, room. I think you did the right thing by not going in because imagine the trauma that you would have inflicted on your other child had she woken up and seen, oh, there's Dada crying over my <laughs> sister and like wailing. Uh, she's yeah. like, what about me? I'm like, I love it. Yeah, no, I, I, um, I, look, it was, I don't know, but it, it, like it was certainly uh, that those few days were like, what the hell's going on here? I had another nightmare this week about this never ending, but that was like, you wake up and you go, okay, that was grand, it was just a nightmare. Um, we had, um, that one I can deal with. We had the, the worst sleeping experience that we had was uh, Con came in and uh, it's six o'clock in the morning. I think my wife was getting up, getting ready for uh, to go to work, whatever that is, to uh, go to another area of the house to get set up at work. And he was he was definitely still asleep and just for about a minute kept saying, garlic bread, garlic bread, you stole, it. You stole my garlic bread, where's my garlic bread? And I, would, I just found this hilarious, I couldn't get the phone out quick enough to get it recorded, it was, um, 
It was a mo- it wasn't quite as deep as your one, Jar, but um, <laughs> e- equally equally uh, impactful. I have never slept better. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that wine? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, weirdly, my my wife wakes up every much like I'm having the most vivid dreams and nightmares I've ever had. Whereas I'm just absolutely conking. But I'm, maybe it's coming. <laughs> You're a sociopath, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah, it, um, seems, it seems that way. We've had a load of correspondence. I don't know if we've got time to get into it or not. What are we going to do here? Yeah, we've got like um, six minutes. And, yeah. <laughs> we'll do another one on Monday. There's, there's a couple of short... We're doing, hold some of them back, Ger, for for Monday. That's a great shot. Let's, there's some of the shorter ones here that we can get. Just uh, Margaret Byrne was in contact on that, uh, that point about the impact of your question saying that somewhere in the deep recesses of my mind, I recall a study on adult males about life, family, work, etc. Always stuck with me that the, at the end of the study, none of them wished that they had spent more time at work. Do we slash kids want per, uh, perfect parenting or present parents? I know my answer. Yeah, uh, 100%. I think I spoke before about somebody who works in our industry who's a bit older than us who told me that his main regret was not spending more time with his kids when they were young. And uh, that really stuck with me. Like, now I'm not saying that I've always been the most present of parents and certainly actually working from home is a pain in the hole because you're here, but you're on the phone a lot, kind of trying to find out what's happening. And it's much more difficult when um, it looks like you're supposed to be here and it's supposed to be a weekend, but you're not really here. Uh, mm. So I, I, the whole working from home thing, it'd be great if there was no kids. I mean, obviously that would mm. be perfect. Um, another one here from Front Row Rugby and Coffee saying about the question as to whether you're damaging your relationship with your children or not. Uh, he or she says enhancing, but he keeps grabbing his bag to go to crash, which is a little heartbreaking. Can't tell if he wants away from me or the missus, uh, or mi- sorry, can't tell if he wants away from me or misses the girls and kids. He's too, and uh, copping on that painting the wall with water isn't really working. <laughs> Our guy seemed to have um, accepted. Hold up, hold up, hold oh, up. Hey, ding dong. Five minutes late. <laughs> go and get it, Nathan. Don't go to the door. Don't go. He better don't not go expect out. me to sign this. Don't I'll go out. Back. Don't go out. <laughs> Why has he not got the suit on? His hazmat suit. He should be leaning out the Why has he not brought the phone? Exactly. That's, that's bad TV making. And he's I mean, invited your man in. Come on and sit down, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Pull up a bottle. Uh, there's another one here from Trevor Nocton. Kid. Whose kids are they? Not mine. What do the Dadcast lads think of parents April fooling the kids about going back to school? Cruel or hilarious? Now, there were two versions of this. One was um, in Kerry, which Radio Kerry put up on their Facebook page. And then there was another one in Dublin where a ma brought the kid to the school gate in his uniform. Ooh. The one in Dublin I thought was the superior one. The other one was just waking them up. But she actually brought him to school. Like, oh, oh, great. You're, go on, your lean has already gone in. You're late. <laughs> For our Dadcast listeners, uh, specifically two Nathan, two boxes. he's replaced himself with two boxes of wine on the uh, camera. And why are you touching them? Glorious. I don't, you're touching them. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands now in a minute. Oh, fire. Isn't it funny how, like, oh, that's books, heavy. Just perfectly serene to everybody who's getting about their day, and suddenly the wine arrives, and the entire house and everybody's coming. are delighted with themselves. Yeah. Uh, good delivery. How okay, many times have your kids appeared? How many times have your kids appeared on uh, off the ball programs over the last week? I'm at four now, I think. Not too I'm much. At, number one. Uh, Settle. I'm on. Hi. A, say hi. Say hi. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, who is that? Like. That is a good question. That is a good question. Who is Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Oh no. He's got to go and drink his wine. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's ten to twelve. Debbie. Bye. Debbie's in there. Bye. Yeah. Rescue situation. Yeah. Oh, She's reflection. Crazy diecast there. That's the first wife to appear. Yeah. <laughs> As things go on, uh, maybe that's how. <laughs> that's how this will have to go. <laughs> like a late a late night Friday night Zoom where uh, where everybody's in it. Yeah, I can, yeah, exactly. I can literally hear a fight breaking out in the room next door. I just wonder, <laughs> should I break it up or just let nature take its course? 
I think letting nature take its course is certainly part of this too, isn't it? It's like how you how you learn to negotiate and navigate things. Yeah, but the physics um, of being usually ends up uh, leading the negotiation. Nathan, there's a lot of noise coming off you up on that box there, by the way, so this, it, Sorry. this better be worth it. Feel free to mute what your mic that? for a second if you want. Okay. Um, John Pigeon, yes, you can, but no YouTube are the most frequently words uttered by me on a daily basis. Uh, yes, you can, but no YouTube. Um, yeah. Uh, that was in response to the uh, whether or not things are getting better. I can't wait to hear this, says Trevor. Minding two boys while the wife works from home, let's just say it's not going to plan. Dave, I didn't realize you had a burner account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's look, she still has to work full time. Um, and obviously, there are no, no games for me to commentate on at the moment, so that's just the, just the way it's worked out. Uh, trying to cook a dinner every day is obviously a challenge, and trying to prevent the fights breaking out with regularity is a challenge. And, but look, it's oh, been the amount of food we're getting through it. All right, uh, do we have to stop now? Because there's, yes, there's another do, good yeah. one here. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We'll stop. We... Paul McDonald, your tweet is going to be read out next. Right. Come Show on. us some wine. Buddy. We're going to lose the file. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Oh, He's touching it. Oh, disaster. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's this week's podcast. Another episode in the book. Stay well.